Welcome. Welcome to worship on this Easter Sunday. It is really good to celebrate with you today. This cross behind me was made by the children of our local primary school and brought to church for their Easter services. Let us rejoice and be glad, for our risen Saviour has opened the gates of heaven and invited us in. Let us rejoice and be glad. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. 
There you will see him. This is my message to you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In Matthew's Gospel, this Easter day of resurrection takes place in this incredible encounter and conversation at the empty tomb with Mary and Mary and the angel of the Lord, and then with the resurrected Christ himself. It's a pivot from grief to joy, and in it is a pivot that all of us are invited and encouraged to take. And I want to look at that pivot this morning and what God might be encouraging each of us for this Easter journey in each of our own lives and our communities. Now, I should say that for me, whenever I read these Easter narratives, particularly of the women going to the tomb early in the morning, it takes me to the conversations and companionship I've had with many different women from around our global world and different cultures, where the way that culture shapes how women will tend to bodies at life and at death, in places of birth and in times of death and grieving, and the significance of different ointments, of spices and of clothing around those times. And I was once part of a gathering called the Anglican Women of Prayer, which brought together women from around our world talking about our lives of prayer and encounter with Christ together. And there was a phrase that the organising group used quite a lot, which was about throwing off our grave clothes. And they used it to talk about the way that we would desire to encounter one another, desire to encounter Christ in our life of prayer, that we would do so in resurrection garments, not weighed down by our grave clothes. And that's a symbolism and a cultural reference that many different cultures will resonate with, the different types of clothing that you wear in those times. And so that phrase has always stayed with me. Have I thrown off my grave clothes? What am I wearing spiritually? Am I dressed in a season of resurrection or am I wearing the weights of grief? And when I'm praying with Christ and when I'm walking with Christ, what am I wearing? Am I carrying clothes and the light and the joy of his resurrection? Or am I weighed down still with things that he has dealt with and taken away? In Matthew's account, the Marys respond to this incredible encounter with the angel with three things. We're told that they have fear, that they have joy, and that they respond with decisive obedience. They do exactly what they are asked to do with haste and with clarity. And in doing that, they have fear and they have joy. And I think that's really encouraging for all of us to know that we can respond to Christ's encounter with us with fear, with joy, but with decisive obedience. And as they moved in that direction, Jesus met them ahead of what they were expecting. He met them as they determined to respond in obedience to the words of the angel. And as he met them, their encounter changed to one of worship and fresh commission. So that's my prayer for us today, this Easter day, and in this season of resurrection that we would have wisdom to know how to cast off our grave clothes and to walk in the resurrection light and life of Christ. That we would have honesty in our discernment of where we have fear and where we have joy and to know that the both can coexist in our calling in Christ, but that we give them both to Jesus and that we respond with decisive obedience to the call that God asks of us as we continue in this season as the diocesan family to live Christ's story together. 
I pray that as we respond in obedience, we would encounter, as Mary and Mary did, the living Christ in unexpected ways, that that encounter will renew us in worship and in fresh commission, that we will hear Jesus speak to us afresh of where he is calling us to go and with the message of life and hope that he has given to us. So may the season of resurrection be one of joyful, life-giving encounter for you and the people that you love and serve and are called to in Jesus' name. Amen. As we celebrate the new life of resurrection, let us pray to the one true God who brings us all to life. Lord God, we pray that the church may proclaim with joy your message of hope for the world. May our lives as well as our worship testify to the truth of the resurrection, broaden our vision of what is possible through new life in you. Life-giving God, transform our lives. Lord God, we pray for the world we inhabit, for those who lead and take important decisions, and for those who follow or are coerced or have no voice. We pray for mercy and justice compassion and integrity. We pray for protection against evil and strengthening of goodness. Life giving God, transform our lives. Lord God, we pray for all babies and those as yet unborn, that they may be born into a world of love and acceptance. We pray for all children at risk. We pray for all parents and those who support them. We pray for the newly baptised and the recently confirmed, for a deeper commitment to supporting one another as we grow in faith. Life giving God, transform our lives. Lord God, we pray for those who cannot think, for the pain or anguish which engulfs them, for all whose lives are troubled and insecure, for those who have little energy left to rejoice. Bring healing and the resources to cope with suffering 
and give us the grace to carry one another's burdens in love. Life-giving God, transform our lives. Lord God, we thank you for all lives well lived and commend to your keeping those who have died. Through the resurrection hope, may they know the joy of heaven. Life-giving God, transform our lives. Lord God, we thank you for the precious gift of new life. May we never again take it for granted, but live each moment in the fullness of life that Jesus has gained for us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for sharing worship with us today. I do hope and pray you are able to celebrate this day with your family. If you are alone, may it be a special day. And we ask now for God's blessing on us all. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, Open to us who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting the grave has won a glorious victory, give us joy as we share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower us and fill us with Christ's Peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us and those we love and care about always. Amen.